As quilters, we get so excited about the next new thing. Maybe it's a new line of fabric. Maybe it's a new technique, a new quilt pattern, a new quilting style, whatever it may be. We are there and we are excited about finding out about it. But tell me about a new way to use my quilt fabric scraps and I am sold. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise and I want to share a book with you. This is not a book that I'm being paid to promote. I love this project. I love this style. I love what this book is about. And it's called Zigzag Rope Sewing Projects. And I know it sounds kind of quirky. I saw a picture of one of the finished products on the Art Gallery Fabric site, and I was so excited. I was totally enthralled with it. And then I found the book. Oh my goodness. And it's on Amazon. And I was so excited to get started. I bought the Kindle version so I could get it right away and start reading it. And then I got the rope. And before you know it, I was making trivets. Look at this. These are beautiful. I love it. This is such a fun, fun project and it's easy. And what a great gift idea to, to give people, to use yourself, but, but to give that are, you know, color coordinated, things like that. But what's amazing even more than that is what else you can do. Now, I've never done this kind of thing, so this is pretty new to me. But from baskets to tote bags to table runners to placemats to oval bowls and and, and then the decorative aspects of putting knots and, and little curly cues here and there. It was really a eye opener for me and so much fun. Well, I'm hooked and I want to share this with you today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm ready to do some coiling with you, but please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, I have had a lot of fun making these trivets. And this is just the beginning because I there's so much more I want to make. The book has patterns for great big market tote bags and small little baskets and bowls. And, you know, you can do the round, you can do the oval, you can do table center. There's just, there's just so much. And, and it's fun and it's quick. And yes, I love quilting, but there are times I want to do other things. And this is a great way to use fabric straps. And, and uh, did I say straps? I meant scraps. <laughs> but it all starts with just this little coil. And once you get here, you just start zigzagging around. And I used, you know, I had some pieces of scraps that I cut strips with, and then I took some off my fat quarters. And I used little uh, quarter inch strips just like this. And it, it doesn't take much. And a lot of times this is something I would have thrown away in the past because I had no use for it. But I want to show you, um, these are the first two that I made. I believe this is the first one. And I love how it came out. And I, I kept everything close together so all the colors were pretty solid. And then I started getting a little daring and, and left some spaces in there. And I liked having a lot of white space to make it more confetti-like. Um, and I thought this was fun. And I did the, the same fabrics and all the trivets that I made um, just for a, a good compare. But here's the back. So essentially they're reversible. There's no difference on the front and the back. And which is great because as you're sewing, you pick up any loose pieces of fabric in between. Now this one, um, I spread out a little bit more. I put less of the um, white background, the, the natural background, and kind of move these pieces closer together. And so you can see a bit of a difference. And like I said, I was just playing with colors, um, placement, spacing to see how it all worked. But essentially I did the same thing with these and the way I wrapped them. I am so excited to share this project with you. When I saw this online, I knew I had to make some. And then once I made it, I thought, oh my gosh, y'all are gonna enjoy this. So completely different from anything else we've been working on. Let's give this a try. We have two steps here. First is our initial coil and we're going to let this end fray and just loosen it up because that way, I want to actually turn this direction, that way it'll um, snug in together and I can sew right over it. And just tuck it in there and start twirling around. I actually find it easier to lay it down on a flat surface 
because in my fingers it tends to wiggle. And this first little bit gets a little tight because there's hardly anything to work with. And I know you're having a hard time seeing. I'm trying to keep my hands as open as possible. So I have my, my little um, centerpiece right there. And I'm going to make about three rounds. So there's two and I'll go three. And then what I'm going to use do is uh, use a straight stitch to crisscross back and forth. And that's going to hold my center together. And I'm just going to use a regular stitch. Now, remember, you've got to use a big needle. This is like sewing on jeans. Um, you want to get a size 16 needle. You want either thread to match, if that's what, what your goal is. Alternatively, you can use um, different colored threads, like a multicolor thread um, would make a pretty design. Now, I have found that I really only need to do this twice. Um, the directions for making this does show that it's a good idea to do it um, four times. And that might, you know, might be better for you. Give it a try. But I find just going back and forth like that twice holds everything really well. Now I'm going to begin the zigzag. So I'm going to set up my zigzag stitch. And I'm going to have the stitches pretty close together and not real wide because I want to, well, actually, there we go. Um, I want to have everything nice and snug. So I'm going to start right here in the middle with a zigzag. And I'm just going to go back and forth right around the center. Now, part of the reason why making a little bigger coil could be advantageous is that you would be able then to have more to hold on to. But um, this works pretty good for me. And so I'm just going around that center circle and I'm just getting everything kind of sewn together. Okay, so I've gone around that initial circle. Now what I'm going to do is start doing my round. What's really important when you're sewing is that your needle goes in one and out the other. So as you're zigzagging, you want to go between both of those pieces because you're sewing them together. And I'm just going to go around this inner loop. And then once we go through this, we'll get to our outer edge and it goes so much quicker. And that's where you can really have some fun with some design work. See, once you get out here, everything starts going a little bit more quickly. And let's see, we've got that one. Now I'm going to make my stitch a bit bigger here. Now that I'm getting past the center, and then this is the stitch I'll go with through the rest. Now what I do here is I'm going to just turn this around to get me back to be the beginning point. This is where I want to be. I want to have my coil and then I want to have my loose piece over here so that as I'm sewing, I can just press it right up against the, uh, the coil. And this is all you're going to do. Now this is where it gets fun. And I mean, not that the coil isn't fun because there's so much you can do with it, but I love adding colors. And what a great way to use these little tiny pieces of fabric that we might otherwise just throw away. I mean, something like this, you're not going to sew with because, you know, it's a quarter inch. It's the size of a seam allowance. Um, and there's really not a lot you can do other than maybe tie a gift bag or something like that. But what I want to show you is the way I, I put it in here. Now, one of the options that is recommended is to put a little dot of glue right down underneath here, and that'll hold it in place. But what I found is if I just put my fabric strip like this, and I bring that loose edge towards the outside, then all I have to do is sew a couple stitches, and once that needle is in that in that uh, fabric, okay, it's holding the fabric right now, it's not going anywhere. 
then I can start wrapping. And I find a seam ripper or stiletto, something um, narrow, even just a, a heavy duty needle um, helps because as you're wrapping this, initially it may want to twist as, whoops, don't get your presser foot in there, um, as you're coming around. Now you can do a couple different things. You can wrap it tight where the, excuse me, um, the camera's just right here in front of where I'm working. Um, you know, you can get it close together like this or leave some little spaces. And I think I'm going to do both. So let me do another piece here and then I'll leave a space. Now I only wrap an inch or two at a time because it's sort of hard to hold on to all this at once um, when there's a, a lot wrapped. So now I'm just going to pick up where I left off and I'm going to continue stitching in the same manner and I'm just going around the loop, going around the coil, making sure that my needle hits both sides and then I'm going to wrap a little bit more. And so this part I'll spread out a little. So there's some space between them. And so I'm, I'm, this is only the second one I've done. <laughs> so I am um, learning and trying and experimenting myself. Okay, so that's kind of fun the way that's spaced out. And we'll just go around and you can pick up speed pretty well. Now in the book, it does give you all the um, stitch length and sizes and um, you know, the details of how to make this work. Okay, so I have my fabric all wrapped around here. And I'm going to go around like this. Now I'm going to leave that tail here for right now and I'll show you how we'll pick that up on the other side. So let's go ahead and go around. And I find I like having a row between my, my wrapped fabrics just so if I, I have some color um, I can, you know, switch it out. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to lift this up between the two pieces of rope. I can hold that. So I hold it up and I just put it like that. So there's the little end of my fabric and it's just going to get caught up in all the sewing and it's not going anywhere. So we'll do another little bit of coiling around and I'm not doing anything as far as tension. I'm just holding this flat over here and I'm spinning it with my fingers and I'm using this hand just to keep the rope straight so it feeds in straight but I'm not pulling it or wrapping it, it just letting it all do its thing, which is wonderful. It makes it so easy. All right, let's grab another color here. Okay, so we'll do this again, where we wrap our fabric around. And, okay, on. There we go. So I'm just going to sew into it until my needle gets in the fabric, just like that. So it, it's held, it's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to wrap this. Now, sometimes I find this wants to fold over and if I just use my, um, what is this, seam ripper, um, it helps kind of hold everything together. Now, you see where I did the solid blue versus where I'm spacing it out. I kind of like that little spacey, um, spacey part. So I'll do a couple rounds close together and then I will space the rest out. I just think it looks fun that way. So let me go ahead and get this sewn. And again, if you line up on your presser foot, you've got a center point right there where your needle generally would be if you were doing sewing right in the middle. Keep that lined up between your two coils your, or your two uh, pieces of rope and that's going to center you as you're sewing around. 
So, whoops, excuse me, let me get that camera back. Are we there? Can you see all right? Um, I just want to wrap this around and we'll go around a few times and I can come and sew. All right, so like I say, I just wrap a couple inches at a time. Now this could be a fun thing, you know, if you wanted to do something, um, maybe a continuous color or lots of different colors, you could do this in advance and just, you know, cut your, your rope to whatever size you're going to make your coil or your, your piece. Basically, I'm making a trivet here. Um, and then you can use the little glue and all you need to do is tack the ends. You don't have to glue the whole thing. Um, but you know, if you're sitting in front of the TV or doing something like that, it would definitely be something easy to do and then you wouldn't have to take the time as you're sewing. Now I'm going to take this piece here and I don't think, see it's not long enough to get caught in the needle, I don't think. If I bring my needle way over there, I think I can just catch it. But otherwise I can catch it on the, on the other way around. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a loop around. Now right here, that's all. I just want to check where I started. Make sure that fabric's in place. And I just run my needle around, catching both pieces of rope. And then I want to make sure that that fabric at the end is in a good place. All right. There we go. How fun is this? Oh my goodness. All right. I think since we have um, a coil around that black and white, I'm going to add another color here. And I really like this peach color, which is fun. So I'm going to put this down underneath and take my strip and fold it over and then I just hold it with my my seam ripper and then once the needles in that fabric it's not going anywhere, so I'm going to take this over here and wrap it around. And again, if it wants to twist, just, you know, use your seam ripper and kind of get in there and, and straighten it out in a way that, that works for you. All right, so I'm going to wrap this around. I'm trying to just use my fingertips so I don't completely block your view. And let's go around a little bit here. And we'll do a little more. But what I love about this is, you know, I can see this being perfect to put under a planter. Um, because it's, it's absorbent and, and the material is 100% cotton the rope itself and you need it to be cotton because the idea is if it's going to be a hot you know like a trivet um, under anything hot it you know placemats uh, it'd make fun mug rugs I mean just so much that you can do but you want it to be cotton because whoops see how that twisted over got the wrong side because if you're if it's anywhere hot um, if it's a polyester or nylon something like that it's going to melt and that sort of defeats the purpose of of why you're using it. So 100% cotton is definitely an important feature um, when selecting your rope. All right, now what I'm going to do here, because I don't think it's going to wrap around, is I'm just going to tuck it down in between and then just sew right over it. Go ahead and make another round here. And you see how quick that goes. It's awesome. All right, let me get some more fabrics. 
spacing the wraps gives you a totally different look than using a a solid wrap where there's there's no rope showing in between the pieces and it's it's just a matter of what your preference is i like them both you know i like this solid color and if you're going for a particular color that you want to mix throughout and really make it focus you know that's that's probably the way to go if you just want to get hints of color you know and this being gray is neutral now look you can hardly see this one um this is a batik a, a batik uh, of pale colors oh here i've got the fabric right here let me show you you wouldn't know that this is that fabric so it has dots and all kinds of background colors in here and so I cut strips of that, and that's this piece. So it's interesting how each fabric can turn out differently, and uh, it just depends on what you're using and how you place it and whether you put it close together. See, here it is close together, and you can really see the fabric more, whereas this, it's more just like a subtle background, which I think is a lot of fun. All right, I have a pretty turquoise fabric here I'm going to use so I just you know get it right up in there between the two pieces of rope and I'll pull it through to there's just a little bit and then I'll wrap it over and I'll sew right till the needle is in the fabric itself and then once the needles in there it's not going any place and then I bring this through without twisting it you know twisting it's probably not a problem because it all gets sewn together um, but if you're using a fabric that has a right and wrong side, then you don't want to have the underside, which sometimes um, will have a different color. Uh, you don't want that side to be showing because then you'll lose the effect of the color. All right, so I'm going to start with it a little bit open. There we go. Sorry, I got in the way. Um, start with it open, then I'll tighten it up as I go, and then open it at the end. I'm just, you know, experimenting to see what this looks like, because I think it is such fun. Um, I love, love being able to use all the scraps, but just all the different pieces and, and, you know, putting it together in different ways. I, you know, the other thing, um, that they show in the book, whoops, there I go hitting the camera, sorry is dyeing the rope. Now, you can probably make your piece and then dye it. Now, what I did see that I loved is making one of these just out of the rope and then dipping it in dye, but not the whole thing. Only dip like maybe a third or a half of it. And then you get this great, um, almost not tie dye because you don't have multiple, multiple um, different colors in there but it is great fun to see the the dye kind of soak across the rope in different areas and it's just it just is really really pretty so there's some fun things you can do and there are quite a few different suggestions now the easiest is a coaster and i think it takes maybe two yards of rope and you, you know, you just do it up and you do it quick and um, you can make them just the plain rope. You can actually buy this rope in different colors so you can get it pre-colored. But again, just, just make sure it's cotton because a lot of these products are um, going to be poly cotton. I mean, you know, it's not much different than clothesline. Now, the the type of rope is important because you want a rope that is substantial, that is a solid piece of rope, not a bunch of little, um, you know, sometimes you can get, if you've ever done piping, where you buy the, the decorative, what do I want to say, the utility um, upholstery type cording, I guess is what it is. And there's lots of strands, and then it's wrapped in a, in a woven, kind of outside piece and which is great because it's going to be contained in inside a strip of fabric it's going to be sewn etc etc but something like this needs to be um, more substantial and be able to kind of hold up on its own because if you're sewing around this and what you're sewing into 
isn't going to connect or tighten up or hold together well, then you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of what we're doing. So there's just different different things to think about as you're doing this. I'm trying to get these pieces close together and not completely block everything with my hands. So let me try it this way. So hold this down and bring the other piece around. There we go. That pretty much worked. And then I'll bring this piece over. There we are. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with this is bring it over, but tuck it in. Rather than have this little little tail sticking out on the back, which it'll probably be, probably get caught up with a zigzag, I kind of like the idea of tucking it in between so that it get caught it gets caught in the stitching. So there we go. Now we'll just come around. So this is where we left um, space between the fabric. And then here we wrapped it more closely so you get a, a uh, what do I want to say, a longer strip of, of solid. You get more of the color. All right, so we're at a point. Let's just kind of go another half a row here. Get some white space in there. And just, just keep working around. And let's see, I'll get to about right here. And then I'll add another piece about right here. Um, this is a fun piece. It has lots of different colors. Um, many of these, some of these are prints, just regular, you know, quilt prints, but um, some are batiks. So you've got the variation in the color, which is what I love. Um, I like fabrics that have lots of color variations and patterns and little graphics mixed in. It just makes it interesting. Okay, so I'm going to fold that over, hold it down. Oops, I got a little carried away there. I was supposed to stop. I didn't. Back up a little. Okay. Now. Okay, so I'll get that in there. And. Just work my way around. And as I'm going, it, you don't have to worry about pulling it tight or tension. Obviously you don't want it looped or folded because then it's not going to sew smoothly and you'll probably have little puckers along the way. Um, and I, you know, prefer not to do that. So I'm going to kind of sew this little bit together, close together, where it's wrapped side by side and then down here, just kind of spread it apart. Um, like I said, I'm checking out different ways of doing it to see what I like best and then just you know take your rope and wrap your fabric up a couple inches and sew and I'm not even going to worry about those threads I'm just going to wrap them in because it's all going to be caught up in one piece okay and then we'll finish this off here just wrap it around but uh, the book has some wonderful instructions on not just flat pieces like this, but bowls, um, some wonderful bowls, and the ovals, oval bowls plus handles. Oh my goodness, you know how to make knotted handles, and there's just, just a lot of fun things. And for me, I'm thinking, you know, gifts. Oh my goodness, folks love interesting gifts. And you can personalize this so well for individuals um, by color, by style, uh, what they use, you know, what they like to have in their home. Do they drink a cup of coffee that they'd love their own little coffee coaster, coffee mug kind of a thing? Um, do they have a centerpiece where they have, you know, a potted plant? 
and and you can do the the color additions in the foils to match somebody's decor or their favorite colors it's just just something fun um, it would, it's also fun for kids. Oh, we need definitely need some color here. It's also fun for kids because you can give them um, a place to keep all their little treasures. And, you know, you make a little bowl out of this. Oh, how sweet would that be? All right, time for a bit more fabric. And then the last two, what I did, I, I started with this and I just used a single length of fabric. I cut all my strips. Um, for the most part, on the 18-inch um, edge of my uh, fat quarter. Now, some of the other scraps were longer, but I just used the scraps in the length they were. And so I'd start with a piece in the middle. Some were shorter, which is what I started with. And then I'd, I'd make a, a white, uh, what do I want to say, make a, a background row in between. And then I'd start with my colors. And notice I left a space between them all, which is essentially what this is. And so while I do my wrap, I leave about an equal amount. Uh, I keep wanting to call it the background because I'm, that's what we call it in quilting. And that's essentially what this is. But I left that amount of the rope visible. And so this is just continuous. And so when I get to the end, what I would do then is, is sew a, 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 a background, a, uh, a piece of rope, and then I'd add another one and I'd sew it. And I'd, you know, just keep doing this. And it's kind of fun to see how it spaces out like that. Now, you may want to um, use smaller sections and not use the continuous colors, or you may want to do something like this. I'm really intrigued with how that batik worked with all these different colors. I think that's probably my favorite because it just sort of you know, it changes throughout. So if you get a fabric like that, then you can use one fabric for the whole piece, which is really, really a fun way to do it. And I'm ready with a new fabric strip. I'm just going to tuck it in here and fold it over and stitch into it. Let my needle hold it in place while I wrap and I use my my seam ripper if I need to to keep things in place and just wrap up a couple inches and so and then this I'll give it a little bit of a closer closer wrap. Oops, see how that wants to fold over? Make sure we get it going the right direction. Okay. Here we go. And I notice I tend to stop with my needle in the coil where it's sewn. Um, it's probably sturdier right there, simply because that's all sewn together. Whereas if you put your needle in this loose coil, things have a tendency to move around and you may have trouble with your, uh, your thread not being where you want it to be, or your needle, I should say not being in the right place at the right time. All right, just a little bit more to go. And just hold that right there. Okay. this down in between, just like that, and sew right over it. And let's see, now 
we need to add a little more blue. I have this pretty blue here. And I have different shades of kind of blue and aqua and peach and gray. And I like that black and white. I think that's fun. I'll get another piece of that I'll put in here. So let's get this started. And then bring this down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this wrapped around. I'll put a few more rounds in. And then once that's finished, um, we'll join up again and uh, we'll get a little loop put on it to finish off the edge. So I hope you're enjoying this. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, I made some good headway and I've just about got this finished. And when we sew down to the end, when we get to about three or four inches, we just want to stop and we're going to um, get ready to make a loop and just sort of fuzz up this end because what we're going to do is tuck it in. And I use my seam ripper just to kind of tuck all those loose pieces in there. And the stitching is going to catch it, so that's, that's not a problem, but I don't want a whole lot of frayed pieces protruding out. Okay, so I just stick it all in there. Now I'm going to shorten my stitch so it's going to sew closer together. And I have it set at the same width because I do want it to cover. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it at a narrow width. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to come through at a narrower width and we'll take it down to about a four, actually three and a half. And then I'll go back over it with a wider width and sort of double hold it all, double stitch it to hold it all together. So I'm going to see how we've got that little space right there. Um, I'm tucking this in and then I'm going to push this together to kind of eliminate that space. So just use your seam ripper or whatever you have and tuck everything in there good and tight and then push this in to fill in that gap. And so I have a narrower width, so I just need to be careful. Um, let's see, I'm going to catch this side of it first. And I think I'll go ahead and cut this. Now I'm going off, uh, off the program here and kind of doing my own thing. And I just thought it might be worth a try to do two narrow stitches and then come back with a wide one on top just to hold all these loose ends down. Now I'll show you the original one where I did it the way it was in the book and it's fine. Um, you know, it worked out really well, so that wasn't an issue. But it just kind of seemed like a, an idea to try it this way. I always like to try things a little different from time to time. All right. Now what I'm going to do is just turn it this way and then widen my stitch so I can cover both directions. So I'm going to take it back up to a five and as I'm sewing, oh I don't need to push that in because everything's in there nice and tight. So I'm going to sew down here and I'm going to come around and come back up one more time right over this area and that's going to lock everything in place and then just sort of tack it right there at the end. Now when I do something like this to tie that to uh, what I want to say secure that end I'll hit my straight stitch and then I'll just straight stitch for a half inch or so and I that just sort of locks the thread in there and there we have it look at that 
Okay, and look at this is wonderful. I'll show you some pictures of it um, laying on the table. One thing I notice when I initially um, finish is these edge wa edges want to kind of bow up just a little bit instead of going flat. And my guess is I may be pulling this outer rope a little too tight. So I'm, I need to be real careful just to let it to lay there and not pull it. And the other thing is I'll just get a uh, pressing cloth and, and my steam iron and just press this and let it dry flat. And I'm sure that'll be fine. It won't take long for this to flatten out. Well, there you go. And how, how simple is that? It is so fast. It's so easy. And I just love um, all the different fabrics and just think of, you know, all the things you can do with this. So I hope you give it a try. I hope you have fun and get inspired to try something different and try something new with those fabric scraps. And here's my finished set of trivets. I love them. They're so pretty. And there will be more rope coiling in my future. I'm already looking online for, for getting some supplies and things that I want to do. But I think they are wonderful. And I really do recommend the book. It has some wonderful ideas. There are some great options and and it's a very creative personalized process so i hope you give it a try and and enjoy watching this and and thinking about what you might be able to make and how you can make something special for somebody and maybe even just for yourself thank you for being here today it's always my pleasure and if you haven't already please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this have a wonderful day